Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today's video we're going to go on a bit of an adventure in Space Engine and visit a nearby galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud and take a look at a system of stars in there that is actually very very interesting and very unusual. It's known as R136 and you're going to find out more about it in this video and also the next video. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So, what we're going to do in Space Engine is we're going to escape from our planet Earth and fly to a distance of about 144,000 light years away from us. Basically, kind of far-ish. Now, where are we going? Well, we're going to the uh, one of the nearest galaxies to us. And I'm going to actually show it to you first by escaping our own galaxy and looking at it from the outside. And it's, it's what's known as a satellite galaxy. It's known as... Um, large Magellanic Cloud, and it's basically just outside of the Milky Way. You can actually see it from several locations on our planet, um, if the skies are dark enough. And Large Magellanic Cloud is known for the brightest nebula in our skies, and that nebula is known as the Tarantula Nebula. Now let me actually increase the light sources here. And so this is the Milky Way. You can kind of see some of our own nebula right there. I believe this is what... This must be... I can't click on it. It's, it's not the Orion, is it? Yeah, it's a Carina nebula. But we're not looking at Milky Way today. We're looking at the Large Magellanic Cloud. Now, this system is right here. There it is. As you can see, it's relatively close to us, but still quite far away. And so let's go to it and let's actually take a closer look at some of the objects that we discovered there. So I'm going to just manually approach this um, galaxy. And this is actually kind of unofficially known as the Magellanic Spiral. It's classified as a spiral because we don't really exactly know what type of a galaxy this is. It might be a bar galaxy, but it, it's still kind of in development, so... It's difficult to estimate the actual type for this. It does contain a very prominent bar at its center, so it might be a bar dwarf, dwarf spiral galaxy, but that's not really important right now. You can kind of see there's a very bright star right here. This is actually a star known as WOH G64. It's one of the largest stars we've discovered. It's practically almost as big as UIS Qtai. Maybe just a little bit smaller, just a little bit, but it's very, very, very voluminous, very bright as well. I, but I can't have, I'm having trouble clicking it. There we go. It's a red supergiant, very large in size, but we're not really here to see this. We might take a look at it later. Right now, we want to take a look at the brightest and most impressive nebula. You can kind of imagine where it is. It's right here, actually. So this is known as a tarantula nebula. It doesn't actually um, always appear in all versions of Space Engines. You may have to do this manually. But if you if you come close to it, you'll start seeing some really, really, really bright stars. And we're going to see them really, really soon. So there's actually quite a lot of really bright stars in this region because this is actually known as the starburst region. This is where stars are created very quickly in a lot of numbers. And the total mass of this particular region, known as R136, is actually something like 450,000 solar masses. Now, this bright object right in the middle is where we're going. It's known as R136A1. As of today, this is the most massive star we have discovered. Now, right now it's actually... It's a wolf riot star and it's a binary wolf riot star, but in reality, it's more than binary. It's very likely there's a lot more stars in there. So I'm going to actually just take a look at this very quickly, just to show you what it looks like in the game. I may need to decrease the brightness again. Uh, so in, in the R136 region, there is actually at least... 10 very well-known supermassive stars that are a lot more massive than most of the stars we've discovered. 
They're all um, anywhere between like 69 masses of our sun to the this one right here being about 315 masses of sun. So all of these stars one day will actually finish their life and this is not going to be a long period of time. It might actually happen in the next million or so years and they're going to go supernova and they're going to explode very, very powerfully. They're going to be very, very bright and they're going to create a black hole. Probably most of them will create a black hole or several black holes. Um, these stars, we're going to actually create them in Universe Sandbox later, but they are ridiculously powerful, ridiculously massive, and they're losing a lot of mass to the outer space here. All of them are actually very close to each other as well. Uh, and they create this super, super massive starburst region where many stars are being created and destroyed at the same time because of the amount of stuff here. Now, some of the brighter supernova I've discovered in the last um, few years, in the last few decades, actually came from the Large Magellanic Cloud, and uh, we expect more to come from this region because this is where a lot of new stars are being created pretty much constantly. It's a very active, growing galaxy. Now, these two stars are R136A1, and I believe this is R136A1A. This is a companion star. Uh, All together, they're kind of creating this really beautiful pattern, although we're not really sure if this is what it looks like, and there might be more stars here, but it's, it's a tremendously large wolf red star. Now, when we actually looked at R136 um, with the telescope, we've discovered at least 24 different stars in this region. Um, so it's very likely that there's a lot of supermassive stars just kind of orbiting around one another and probably as many as 24. But in Space Engine, however, if you look at what's present in the system, you discover that there's even planets. And I really wanted to take a look at them, actually, because they're not too far away. They're actually, if you were to move out, they're actually right there. We can see them better if we enable the orbits here. So look at that. There's actually planets here as well. Now let's, uh, let's come and take a look at them, because this is actually a little bit unusual. Now, these stars are in a region of space where there's very likely not a lot of metallic material, not a lot of material that can create planets. Many of these stars are made entirely of hydrogen and maybe helium. And they're essentially, and they're essentially also very young. They're only about 2 million years in total. So there's probably not going to be planets that look like this. This is a very ancient, very well-developed planet that even has craters on the surface, which suggests that it's been around for uh, at least a few hundred million years. So unless it was captured by these stars from somewhere else in the Large Magellanic Cloud, it probably is not going to exist, even though it does exist in the game. Uh, now, many of these stars are also um, going to basically explode, and during the supernova, they're going to create a lot of the metallic material, like silicates and oxygen and carbon and, and so on, uh, that will then be able to create planets. Uh, so... Until that happens, it's very likely that we're probably not going to see anything like this. This is probably a bit of a science fiction. Let's take a look at the second planet, which is a little bit cooler with a temperature of about 217 degrees Celsius. But once again, maybe not super realistic because chances are this probably doesn't exist. It even has a moon, actually. There's even the moon that's also as purple or as blue and as hot as this planet. And this one, it looks even older than the first planet we've taken a look at. So all of these are basically um, very Earth-like in mass, but very, very hot and clearly not habitable. And the last one, I believe, was a gas giant. We can take a look at it as well. And all of these are kind of... Um, uh, close enough to the stars to still be very hot, but also don't forget that this star is very, very bright and very, very powerful. A lot brighter and a lot more powerful than our sun. So even though this gas giant is actually kind of far away from uh, from the parent star, at a distance of about 742 astronomical units, which is actually uh, pretty much about 20 times farther away than Pluto is from the sun. So even at this distance, this gas giant is actually really, really, really hot. 
uh, it's at 153 degrees Celsius right now. But it's possible that maybe one of its moons is going to be a little bit cooler and maybe just maybe will be kind of habitable, even though I don't really think these exist here. Although there might be a guest giant. Guest giant might actually exist around um, these particular stars because guest giants just need gas. They don't really need rock. Anyway, so none of these moons are habitable either. They're all about 120 degrees Celsius. A little bit too hot. But uh, just for fun, let's actually maybe take a look at at least one of them in a little bit more detail. So, in essence, this is kind of what I wanted to do in this video. I really wanted to just explore the R136 system in Space Engine and tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, it's a very fascinating system. It's actually the, um, the only such region of space we know where so many stars are being created and so many stars are being born. This is basically what you would call um, a star nursery, but even more so than the one in the Orion belt, because this is where stars are in a very large concentration and there's a lot of very young and very, very massive stars that we don't really see in our own galaxy because our galaxy is just a little bit older than that. Now I found a hot desert and this one actually kind of looks really cool. Now I found a hot desert and this one actually kind of looks really cool. It has an atmosphere and temperature of 140 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure of 15 atmospheres. That's pretty high. Its surface though might look very beautiful. So let's check it out. Let's land here and take a look at this very beautiful planet known as R136A133 because it's actually a moon, not a planet. And there is the star in the skies. Now, if they do exist, if these planets do exist, it's probably that they weren't really created from the same material as the actual star because these stars are very low in metallic material that can create planets. And when I say metallic, I really mean things like silicates and rocks. They mostly have just hydrogen, but you never know. Now, before we finish this video, I actually just wanted to do this. I wanted to click on this button right here just to kind of show you all of the objects present in the system. So there is our star, or actually two stars, and there are our beautiful planets that we have. So there is the gas giant and all of the other planets with their sizes and also their numerical values listed. So you can kind of see what they look like and also what they have on them. The interesting thing here is that all of them kind of look very similar except for maybe this one. This one looks a little bit more unusual. But anyway, so that's really all I wanted to do in this video. And I think we're going to just stop here, escape the system really slowly, and take a look at it from the outside one more time, just to see how all of this looks like from a distance. Now, so this is R136 in a nutshell, and in the next video, we're going to recreate this using Universe Sandbox just to see what things look like here and how it actually may appear and how these stars might interact. Now, one day we're going to see a lot of supernova coming from this region because all of them are going to explode, creating some of the brightest supernova we probably have seen. And just like a few years ago, there was a very, very bright supernova that created uh, a tremendous amount of radiation. We're going to see this again and it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Now, it might not happen when we're around, we might not actually see it. And uh, the last time there was a supernova from this galaxy was back in 1987. And this was actually the nearest supernova in the recent years. But we know that it's definitely going to happen and it's definitely going to be absolutely beautiful and super, super bright. So hopefully we're still around to see it and maybe make some observations as well. For now though, let's go away and explore the rest of the universe. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with people that enjoy watching space videos. See you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.